and welcome to the Pause It Podcast. I'm Dr. Sam, and with me, as always, is Dr. Robert. Hey, everyone. Uh, We're excited to be back today. We have a really great podcast. We're ready to talk today about obtaining a pet. So going out, getting a pet, whether you are getting a puppy from a breeder or you are rescuing either a puppy or an older pet, um, however it is you decide to come by owning a pet. And actually, even right here, we have two different ways that we obtained our pets. How did you obtain Loki? Uh, I got Loki from a shelter uh, back in Lansing at the time. So actually, I can thank Dr. Rena Singer for that. The only reason I have that dog is because she was kind enough to go pick him up while I was in class. So, Rena, if you're listening, thank you. Because I owe you one for that one. For doing, oh, I didn't always. even know that. I didn't even yeah. know she went and picked him up for you. Oh, I, I for to this day, I'm eternally grateful that she went and picked him up that day because no one wanted him. They all wanted the female husky. Uh, so it worked out really well for me. But uh, she was kind enough to go down and pick him up for me while I think we had an exam that day. And Probably. Went, it was vet school. We had an exam. All God, the time. that's cool. How oh, I don't miss that at all. Um, one, one big yeah. exam. Every day. I'm a big nerd. I totally miss vet school. I loved vet school. <laughs> I'm not a nerd. I did not miss it at all. I am. 100%. <laughs> totally. Totally uh, true. It's okay, though. <laughs> um, And I actually got, we got Gus from a breeder. So he, oh, okay. he got him as a puppy, eight weeks old. Um, And there's actually a few reasons for that. Not to say that you can't get a great rescue with kids, like young kids and stuff like that. But oddly, we had actually had um, a little bit of a rough time finding a great like rescue that we felt really comfortable with because we had such young kids at the time. Um, Mm. And so because because we got Gus in 2020 and Henry was born in 2019. You're right in the heart Um, of COVID. I know I'll have a COVID puppy. That's a whole nother podcast. (laughs) (laughs) But um, no, but seriously, um, it, it, uh, we had actually had um, a dog that we rescued that actually bit Charlotte in the face. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, Oh, I'm so sorry. And we had done, no, I mean, she's, she's okay. It was a very like minor bite. It wasn't, he didn't break the skin. She did have a little bruise and it was like right here. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was definitely one of those situations where, and he was like, you know, it goes to show you, like, there's no bulletproof breed, right? Like there's no breed that you can say, oh, they'll never bite a kid. Well, anything with teeth can bite a child. So you, you can never, ever say that. Um, but sometimes like with rescues can come some baggage that you, you don't even know. And even when you know the right questions to ask, like, you know, the situation that you need to get them from, like this dog had been fostered with a family with children, but their youngest was five. And my children were actually younger than that. And I, they had never noticed anything with him. And he actually started resource guarding, like right when he came to stay with us. Oh, no kidding. Mm -hmm. yeah and he actually lunged at net nora too um and they had Mm. said like he had been living with them for a while and like they had just never had any sort of issue with him whatsoever really he was a very yeah he was a very sweet dog um i sometimes think that that it might have a little bit been the circumstance because he he was going through heartworm treatment at the time and Mm -hmm. he had just had um two he had just had his like last two injections Okay. The day that he, um, like, so one, one day and then one the next day. Yeah. Um, and, um, I don't know when the last time you did heartworm treatment was. I haven't done heartworm treatment in ages. <laughs> that's what I think. I was like, they don't do that in emergency medicine. Nope. That's not, uh, <laughs> not my category. <laughs> but they are, a, they're, they're a painful injection. Mm-hmm. They're a, like a deep IM injection or intramuscular okay. injection. And um, so you, you know, they don't probably feel great right after it happened. And that, that actually was right when he, that happened with Charlotte. So I wonder if he oh. had been in pain or something like that. Sure, but truthfully, sure. I, I, I couldn't take the risk of having him. No, I don't house. think you ever do in that case. You mm-hmm. protect your right. child, children first, first and foremost. Um, and it's always a concern, even when any dogs around children. Oh yeah. You worry about it. Like I trust Loki to death, but, and he's great with kids, fortunately. Yeah. But it always worries you just like you don't want to have that dog that hurts a child. No, Um, no. And the thing is, is like Gus that we have now, I mean, he's a dope, you know, he's 
great. He like kids do every anything to him. I mean, really. But I remind them every day that like that's how you're gonna get bit. You can't do that. You can't mm. put your face in his face. Every, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's very sweet, and truthfully, they do, and he doesn't do anything. But one day, you know, and something could change. I, who knows? You know, it's just that yeah, actually be a, that had a good, to be really uh, safe topic in the future too to cover like how to teach your kids to approach dogs because mm-hmm. there is definitely good ways to go about it and bad ways to go about it and even oh, yeah. something simple as telling your kid always ask an owner first can you pet their dog oh, yeah. that's like the number one thing i've seen just walking loki for walks some parents their kids or some kids just don't know they come right up and walk and start trying to pet them i'm like fortunately mm-hmm. he's nice but something you want to train your kids early on always oh, yeah. always ask we always saw our kids ask and then like let the dog smell you and also mm-hmm. even if they say they're friendly you still never put your face in a dog's yes. face ever yeah. Yeah. yeah so but um but how did you find your breeder because i'm curious uh yeah it's actually a process of, i haven't been through my parents did it for our other dogs but mm-hmm. was there certain things you looked for when you're looking at breeders that kind yes. of led you to the right choice because obviously gus is brilliant so it worked yeah. out but gus uh is great yeah. Little star of my um, <laughs> So <laughs> we we love him. He's yeah. um you know he so uh, it's a couple of I mean there's cut quite a few things actually. Um so first is knowing what breed you want, which we'll mm-hmm. definitely get into in a minute. Yeah. It was like how do you even decide what breed? And I think the first part with that is you have to be really 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 honest with yourself how much time you have, how active you are. Mm-hmm. Um And then like, how willing are you to groom? How willing are you to clean? How willing are, you know what I mean? Get brushes or pay a groomer. Like all those things really come into it because there's great dogs at every level of grooming. There's great dogs at every level of activity. (laughs) There's great dog, you know, but like, they're not all great for all people. And Mm -hmm. a lot of times people like the look or the aesthetic of a dog, but then they really have no idea what goes into it. And a mismatch. Thank you Game of Thrones for making Huskies all over the adoption shelters now because oh, everybody no. wanted the husky because they looked like the what were they called um the some dire wolves yeah and everybody got huskies and then even uh the guy who plays Tyrion made a comment yeah. on social media at some point being like stop getting huskies like these are not just dire wolves where you can adopt them and they're gonna be like no. they need exercise like they, they are not for everybody they really aren't and um there was a big problem with it during the first couple seasons of game of thrones well, I think it happens actually almost any time. So like it happened with Cocker Spaniels and Lady and the Tramp. And then they just started yeah. like overbreeding them, which mm-hmm. is also a problem because then you have a lot of really bad examples of that breed out yep. there with all the worst problems. And then you have a whole bunch of people getting those dogs. And then they're yep. like, wow. And Dalmatians then there was like Dalmatians, 101 Dalmatians, I was just going to say. Um, I, and then that was like they they had like an explosion and like yeah. how I hardly ever see Dalmatians anymore. I, I have yeah. like maybe two or three that I see. Um, Frenchies are a big one. The Frenchies are everywhere, and like you, a California. great Frenchie. I love Frenchies, You're but like a worst. great Frenchie. I love Frenchies, but <laughs> a really good one is great. But like they can go so awry, so bad so in bad. so many different ways. Yeah, that's yeah. a podcast in itself. Because honestly, smushy face dogs. We'll have a whole. I could do it. I could talk for about literally just how to take care of us that's our idea for next week yeah. honestly we're yeah, doing that one after we're gonna our have next, to do next it. idea yeah. that's our next one Perfect. that's done <laughs> yeah um but but i think um and then there's some breeds that like are like total sleepers like you wouldn't even realize how awesome they are and like you're mm-hmm. like if i just know your personality i'll be like yes go get yeah. that dog they're great you know um and so um Anyway, getting back to Gus, so we started looking around. Number one, I knew realistically travel was not was only going to be like a certain radius, right? So like I wasn't yeah. about to drive three days to go get him. We weren't going to fly to go get him. There are certain places where I tend to go, like being from hmm. New York. So if there was one in New York, great. That probably would have worked out fine. We go and visit family in like Illinois or Iowa. So like any of those places would have been like, eh, no big deal, you know, or anywhere yeah. in Indiana. Right. But I was like somebody in Indiana or Michigan or, you know what I mean? Like has to have a good lab, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so we started looking, um, I wanted ones that had the OFA testing because I know yeah. like I wanted to make sure that his hips were going to be good. I wanted to make sure his elbows were going to be good, that he wasn't going to have mm. the exercise induced collapse. So like it, being a veterinarian, it's kind of nice. Cause there's certain things I know 
like this breed gets this. So I'm going mm-hmm. to look to make sure they've been tested and they're not going to get this. Um, so that was kind of like number one. Then mm-hmm. number two, I was like, uh, every lab I know has allergies. I would like to get one <laughs> that I, you know, being a veterinarian, I'm sure that mm-hmm. my dog was going to end up with something. So, you know, yeah. yeah, but, uh, but I was like, I would rather not be like, at least, at least not be something that like their vet sees them all the time. It's like, oh, he's got an ear infection yeah. every week. You know what I mean? Um, and so I actually, uh, found this cause, cause what I started doing was I would find a breeder and then I would start reading what everyone said about them, like on mm-hmm. Facebook, like who had gotten puppies from them. And yeah. so like, there was one that I was like, oh, this look, this looks great, you know? And then everyone's like, oh, does your dog have allergies? Yeah, my dog has allergies. All of our dogs have allergies. And I was like, oh, You're I'm like, not. nope. <laughs> I was like, so we're good. Um, I also stayed away from anyone that did like, I don't want to offend anybody, but like silver, like I wasn't going to get into the dilute stuff. I, I that's know fair. that that's going to cause issues with skin. There are that's awesome all silver too. labs out there. I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about them, but I'm just saying a lot of them, like you just know they're going to have skin issues. And yeah. some of my worst derm cases have been dogs that have been the like really dilute chocolates or the uh, chocolate labs tend to, have, mm. for whatever reason, they seem to just and i love chocolate yeah. labs but like they have the worst skin issues i feel like even worse than you know your black labs or your or like your cream oh labs. it's genetics there's stuff like it component is, to definitely it. but i don't but but even like the fact that like so when you get into dilute genes then you're d- definitely getting a lot more of the issues right yeah. so what i don't care what breed it is it's not i mean it happens with with dobermans too like um mm-hmm. with the like dilute alopecia or like um uh I'm trying to think Frenchies, um, the blue Frenchies. I love a blue Frenchie, but uh, you're just adding you're such a sucker for Frenchies. I am. I love them so much. Oh my gosh, that sound. It's just the greatest sound in the world. <laughs> Even though I know nightmare. it means I can't breathe, but like I love <laughs> it, it keeps me up at night because I can't sleep and so like... <laughs> Right, right. I know. Oh. Well, for a long time it was like all I heard for like 12 years. You know what I mean? So it's like to me, it's, it's like, like a noise oh, machine oh, just in the background. Like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. But anyway, so um Okay. So then that was the next part. So, and then I actually called his veterinarian, like the veterinarian that they use because I'm a little extra. And I was like, it's good to know because this is other ways for people to know about like where to look for breeders. What are the things they should, what other questions they should be asking? Because really anyone can breed a dog and call themselves a breeder. The question is like, what are the credentials behind it? And this is areas that I'm not as familiar with because um, I haven't done it yet myself. Uh, I know some things I, like I said, from the veterinary standpoint, I know things are important to me and a dog, mm-hmm. but there's also you're buying the dog from someone. Mm-hmm. Um, so like knowing about what they do too. And so yeah. it's great to know about the veterinarian they, that they work with. Yeah. And so I, so I called her and it turns out they had two different veterinarians. Mm-hmm. One that was like, like who, you know, I mean, she was so nice, you know, she called, called me yeah. and she was just like, yeah, you know, they're all like really outgoing dogs. They're really sweet. Like they're all very mm-hmm. friendly. Um, and um she said that i think i do a cytopoint injection like once or twice a year out there and i was like all right then so (laughs) So, that's not bad that means there's allergies but they're not like you know they don't they're not they're not horrible right so um is there any red flags you would share with people to avoid in terms of like looking for certain breeders or um or just yeah just in general well or locations to find them so well, there was one thing that I did learn actually from getting Gus that even though we love Gus very much, he, he was a pandemic dog, right? He mm. was a pandemic puppy. Um, and he does have some fear issues. Like he, he was okay. not just like your totally like easy lab that just like never had any issues whatsoever. And it turned mm. out that he was the first litter of a, like the mom, right? So like dad was tried and true. But mom, oh, okay. he was, she was, he was the first, whereas all the other puppies that I had heard about before mm-hmm. came from different moms and none of them really had those issues. And I've met them at my clinic. Okay. So oh, like, really? I, like I've met siblings of Gus mm-hmm. as a veterinarian. And I was like, they're great. They just come up to you and they're exactly how they should be. Sure. And, and I didn't ask that question. Mm-hmm. I just didn't ask it. Um, and so, so first time moms being an so important first thing. time mom, I don't know that it's necessarily a bad thing, but I think you need to know mom's personality. And I, and they had had so many other litters that were just great with other moms and the same dad that I didn't even right. think like, oh, well, what if hers aren't, you know what I mean? 
Yeah. And, and so he's fine. Like we went out of our way to socialize him and to constantly, you know what I mean? But like, he definitely had some like fear things happen and like, you know what I mean? Just cause right. also too, it was hard. It was a hard time to be able to get out and like people wearing masks and like people weren't coming near each other. And you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, it, like socializing a pandemic puppy was definitely a thing that was difficult. And I don't care yeah. what breed your dog is. I don't care how many dogs you have or how many of your friends have dogs or their family or you have to socialize your dogs. They have to meet people all the time. And people are like, Oh, I have a dog. I have a neighbor. I'm like, you do. And they'll get to know your dog and they'll get to know your neighbor, but they won't know anybody else. And so this is how, Mm -hmm. and maybe they'll be fine, but why would you take that chance? You know what I mean? What if they're not, you know? And a lot of times people are like, Oh, they were abused. I'm like, or they just weren't socialized. Like those, they don't have to have been hit. They can just have not been socialized and that can make mm. a dog look like they've been abused. I agree. And I think it's important when you miss, when you said they need to be continued to be socialized because oh, yeah. Loki used to be really well socialized for what he is, but he's actually gotten worse because we got bad for a couple of years because of COVID and whatnot. And he actually mm-hmm. took a step back. Yeah. Um, he plays like an idiot. Uh, he's too <laughs> like, I'm so excited to see you that he doesn't know how to properly introduce himself anymore right. and unfortunately it causes now we don't go to dog parks as much because i don't like him scaring you know other dogs because he just right. he growls out of excitement and mm-hmm. people don't understand that he's a husky and they're known for biting small things so people panic and yeah, yeah. so yeah. continuing to socialize i think is super important it's true um, because for the longest time gus would go up to people wagging his tail and barking at them hmm. Um, it's he doesn't now thankfully and he will if you come to my door you might think somebody will like that he'll eat you he won't he's actually very sweet but like like at our house he is still pretty protective but like outside at least now he'll just go up to people but for the longest time i mean wagging his tail happy as a clam but like growling like oh my gosh you're like sending all the wrong signals you know? <laughs> you're sending all the wrong signals Gus. <laughs> yeah. you're a happy guy <laughs> like you're a lab come <laughs> on <laughs> you know so, so yeah, I mean, it, it, I, we continue to socialize him and he will mm-hmm. take a step back if you don't. And yeah. I think that that's so important um, because dogs do change and their personalities change as they get older, mm-hmm. especially a rescue. And like, that's the other thing too, is that like a lot of times people get surprised by new behaviors that they rescue a dog and they're like, oh, they didn't do this when I they, they first came home. It's like, you're not going to know that dog until you've had them for a year. You have to experience them through every season. You have to experience in them like yep. every holiday. I don't know. It's like meeting a person and like dating them. Like you think you know somebody. Go through every single season with them before you say think it again you know for people them. in the back. Honestly, like it's got to at least know them for a year. <laughs> yeah, it's really important. Uh, like even when I first adopted Loki, literally I almost gave him back after the first month uh because he one destroyed all of my things for only costing like a hundred dollars to adopt he was like fifteen hundred dollars in damages in the first there's month no free dogs there's no free dogs exactly like, it's a trick um even when you think it's a great idea but he cost so much money in the beginning and i had to go through yeah. so much training with him and yeah he's a great dog now but oh god they're nightmares but after a year yeah they settle down they become who they are and it's it, i think dating is an excellent example of what a dog is like you were dating them for a year and by that point you know who they are and at that point you're kind of stuck with them don't yeah. you? <laughs> but so. the thing is i do think that that like you you have glimpses before that it's not like mm-hmm. every single time it has takes a full year but like yes. but like and some dogs are really easy they come in no problem they get potty trained right away great but they may not and it really is mm-hmm. like a commitment if they don't and then I think you also have to bear in mind, like, well, what are you going to do if they don't? Are you going to give them back? Is yeah. that the plan? Or do you, like, have a trainer that you could take them to? Um, do you have, and maybe you should anyway. Have you read any books about, like, behavior? Are you going to be somebody that's going to use adverse? Or are you going to be somebody that um, does, like, more positive type of, you know, stuff? Which yeah, I tend to be in the school of the positive yeah, I think that's a good thing, especially to talk about with your partner and make sure if you do have a partner, make sure you're on the same page because how you train a dog, like that's part of the obtaining a dog process. Mm-hmm. You know, making sure you're on the same page with training. Some people are positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, or punishment. Like those are all three different types of training methods, and some people are more comfortable with one than the other. 
uh, and being consistent, like with who's feeding them. Cause that's honestly most of the time who the pet will eventually attach to more, <laughs> yeah. uh, just for a trick for all owners. If you want to be the number one in their life, feed, feed them. them every time. <laughs> don't, um, don't overfeed them though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't overfeed them. <laughs> um, but these are all important things. Like when you're continuing to obtain a pet, and and I, think, I think also being the one that takes them for like walks and plays with them. Yes. Cause that, that's a high value thing too. I mean, depending mm. on also the breed, right. I mean, yes. like Gus has to be exercised. If he's not, it's not good. <laughs> he's, he's not good. Um, one thing. Actually, I think he's I'll... fine. He's just, he just like, keeps like being like, hi, come on. What do you want to do? Can I, why are we not pay, doing something? Pay attention to me. What's happening? So he's got a really cute face though. So I'd be like, all right. I fine. know. And they're like, okay, I'll throw the rings for you. Cause that's yeah. his favorite thing. The rings. We have two good purple boy. rings. <laughs> I'm just gonna, but they're brilliant because he's a retriever so he retrieves them so i have to mm -hmm. keep walking around and get them he just brings them back and then i throw the next one. <laughs> oh, they're great man. polar rings i don't know it's, get a polar ring for your dog they're awesome yeah, right? <laughs> i do i love them they're great i'll have to get one for loki well he doesn't retrieve that's the problem so <laughs> yeah of, yeah he takes it front and away. then you're like okay i guess i'll go find it yeah throw it for you again yeah it's more exercise for me than him at the end of the day <laughs> um Right. But yeah, I think one of the thing, like in terms of where you get your dog from, this may be only, I'm not sure, maybe it applies to you as well. Craigslist, uh, people getting dogs oh, at Craigslist. Oh my gosh, please don't get dogs from Craigslist. Yeah, I would take caution there. Again, for us, a lot of times we find most people that adopt dogs from Craigslist, one of their dogs end up getting parvo like a week afterwards. Uh, and I'm not saying there's, that happens every time. So please don't say that that's the case. But uh, we're close to Mexico. I do think it happens pretty often. And I think people misrepresent a lot about the dog yeah i just be very careful where you get your dog from yeah. um even pet stores caution there sometimes oh too gosh, please um, i actually saw a dog with ear mites that is not common i know people think that dogs get ear mites all the time they don't yeah, they that's... don't that's not what happens <laughs> like yeah. cats get ear mites yeah cats dogs get ear mites, not dogs shouldn't have ear mites it is pretty rare to see an ear mite in a dog and i saw one really yes I literally, because I did a cytology and we looked and I was like, this dog's got ear mites. Are these the right ears? Um, no, I mean, it did look like ear mites, but it, sure. the only reason I think is, is because they were in this pet store in the mall that mm -hmm. is not clean. Yeah. That's what you, I think You like really take caution with pet stores, Craigslist. Um, Most pet stores are puppy mills. Yeah, it's true. exactly. I don't care what they tell you. It's true. And yeah. they're mostly overcharging you for a mixed breed dog mm -hmm. uh, yeah 100 agree um and honestly most of the time i don't care i know people have a big discussion about like adoption versus breeding i don't care honestly where you get your dog from most of the time as long Either. as it's the right dog for you it kind of goes back to that life cycle thing like make sure they fit with your style of living whether you're active or you're sedentary as mm -hmm. long as they fit your lifestyle that's all i care about because honestly that means they're not going back to where you yeah. got them in the first place because oh yeah and i them. think i think i mean i've rescued dogs i've mm -hmm. fostered dogs and yeah. then i've gotten dogs from breeders i'll and i will continue to do all of those things at yeah. the place in my life where it makes sense yeah. i have little children i wanted a dog that i could raise with them mm -hmm. that i knew didn't have a bite history or anything like that that was crucial to me at this moment yeah. mostly because we did try to rescue and it didn't mm -hmm. work. And I, when I tell you that I met probably five or six dogs before we got the one that bit Charlotte, like mm -hmm. this wasn't like the first one we like met Yeah. and we were, we were looking and I kept like going and meeting the like rescue person and like the dogs were either like just so crazy or so you know what i mean or one of them had had like a fracture that wasn't fixed properly and like the oh, dog was thing. lame and i was like i just think this is a recipe for some like this dog is gonna have problems you know what i mean like and i was just like i just they're like well he's not painful we give him this brown pill every day i'm like that's carprofen he is painful <laughs> and they didn't know what they were giving him you know so i mean like yeah. that's part of it too mm -hmm. um so getting a dog that's been fostered is very helpful because usually the foster has a lot of information for you. Yeah. I think and it's a great place, a great resource for people looking for pets. Um, yeah. Adoption. Like, yeah, for similarly, one of myself, I wanted to get a dog that was a little older when I was in vet school because I was hoping to not have to potty train it. 
that backfired terribly. But that was the goal. Um, and you know, eventually we figured it out. But trying to figure pick a dog that fits your lifestyle is super important. Like that's of utmost importance. I don't care where it comes from most cases. But again, besides Craigslist. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. And just be just be really honest with yourself, like about like, are you going to if you've never gotten up at five AM before you went to work, you're not gonna do it with your dog. You might do it nope. for like a month. Yep. But you're probably not going to do it in the cold in the, you know what I mean? Like you're just, it's not going to happen. So that's okay. Right. And if you want to like, you know, like a huge dog, but you don't have the space for it, get a greyhound. Yep. Yeah. Honestly, greyhounds, best greyhounds dogs. I will great. advocate for them always. Cause they're just such fantastic greyhounds. dogs. They're they exercise when you want to be, and but it. they'll sleep all day when you don't want to. Mm-hmm. It's my kind they're, of dog. It's great. Uh, they're honestly fantastic. I think they're such lovely dogs besides their teeth. That's really the only drawback about them when they get older, but True. get dentals and they're fine. Exactly. Um, yeah, I can't brush think of else. Yeah, or, or brush their teeth. Um, all the above. Yeah. So uh, I'm trying to think of the big things. Uh, we want to make sure we mention to people about. Well, I would say so. So like, I guess the rule of thumb for me would be like you said, like figure out your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Make sure you pick a dog that makes sense for your lifestyle. And like, actually, you know, don't go off of like the one time you met the perfect version of this breed, right? Because like you yeah. might meet like the best Weimar runner and be like, he was so calm. That's not that's the breed. Rarity. Yep, <laughs> so that never happens. They're great dogs, but like that's not the breed. So yeah. go and like research the breed. And then as far as breeder versus rescue, again, I don't care either. I really, if you can find an awesome rescue, that's great. Then that's what one less dog that needs a home. And I love that. But also be honest with yourself. Can you take on their baggage? If you can't, get a puppy and try to get it from the most reputable breeder that's not doing it for the money. Any breeder that's yeah. doing it for the money isn't doing it for the right reason. But if they're doing it to try to like make the breed better, then awesome. Great. Get one from a breeder. And take into account the fact that like a lot of, of, of purebreds, I think it's a, a, maybe it's something that maybe people don't always know is like, they have a lot more issues like purebred dogs have yeah. like known issues and cats too. purebred yeah. cats they're awesome but man they have a lot of problems yeah the number of purebred cats i've euthanized for heart disease at the age of one oh, is insane that's awful I yeah know it's that. like so yeah like a lot of pure that's that's the biggest thing I've well seen i know for, they all have heart disease i agree with that, yeah. that is true um, but i've had that. a lot will go in heart failure at the age of like one and they're like how is this possible it's like honestly it's a purebred cat it happens a lot and uh oh it's like it's some smush face ones um which one's the person Devon rexes i think i know they're not Devon rexes are not or i think uh maybe russian blues um think I, think. Of, I think of persians are you thinking of like exotics Maybe more the exotics. It's like more the exotic, like, I can't like think of happens. I'm bad with cat breeds, honestly. For me, most of the time, it's domestic short hair, domestic long hair, and domestic medium hair. Those are my <laughs> three for 95% of them. Because, um, But yeah, honestly, they're purebred. Uh, just be, they, they, they come with issues. Uh, it comes with dogs, too, cats and dogs. Um, they tend to have more issues across mm -hmm. the board. Um, much... That's not to say that you can't get a mixed breed that doesn't get happen to get the worst of all the different breeds you know what i mean oh, yeah. like i mean that can you know there's sometimes you, you just don't you don't know you know mm -hmm. um and if you are so if you are going to get a purebred like do try to talk to the breeder um yeah. and make sure that they sound like they're in it for the right reason mm -hmm. um also too i think um when you get a dog from a breeder remember that your breeder isn't a veterinarian and um sometimes some of the things that that like they will put out share there, with you yeah um are based in kind of like things bubble that... that's yes not I know it. it's because i think they know their breed very well um and they do and i think that yeah. that's that i don't discount that at all and yeah. i don't discount that they haven't had the experience of, that, that they've had but i do think it's very easy sometimes to misconstrue an experience for like all things of this like yeah. I used to um, volunteer a lot for French Bulldog Rescue Network, right? And they're like, you can never give a, a Frenchie Ace Promazine. Ever. So I, I recently read that uh, in a piece of paperwork from a, from a rescue. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I said, don't ever give Frenchies ice crumbs. I'm like, no, I give it to them all the time. Yeah. It's but the so thing helpful. is, like, they won't cover a bill that has Ace Promazine on it. And oh, when I worked at a vet clinic and my Frenchie needed, or I had rescues at the time too, and one of them needed, like, yeah. oh, one of them needed to have her eye removed. And they and they were like, give them this protocol for 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 anesthesia. And I was like, I will never do that. That is yeah. so rude. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. These are yeah. veterinarians I trust. They're going to use the drugs that they think are safest for this dog. And I see them anesthetize dogs every single day. I was not a vet yet. I was a technician. And yeah. I was like, I won't. I would never do that. No, it's because every dog is different. The reason we have drug protocols is because we do physical exams. We find out they have heart murmurs. We know their history. And then we choose an appropriate drug protocol based on those things. There is no blanket statement for any breed, for any dog. Yeah. Um, Boxers. I think you can, you can know your breed too. very That's well. another one. Yeah. Uh, you can know your breed very well, but just uh, doesn't mean you need no. You doesn't mean you know all dogs. That's all or cats. Well, know. that and then also too, I think it like there's some questions about which vaccines we should do, and that certain dogs shouldn't get certain vaccines, or mm. certain size dogs shouldn't get more than one vaccine. Like things that are not like they're just not based in anything. And if yeah. you know as a breeder that you have bred a dog that has vaccine reactions, that's not the vaccine. You've just bred a dog that gets vaccine reaction. Yeah, exactly. So that's the issue. So then don't <laughs> breed that dog anymore. <laughs> exactly. So um, some of things do actually have like a bit of a genetic component. Like you could pass yeah. things along. No, yeah, 100% they do. So it's uh, all part of obtaining a dog and make yeah. sure that you uh, do your research, um, both in terms and of breeding and the dog that you want, the breeders and the dog that you want. Um, we'll talk about the finances actually in the next episode. Yeah, our, our next podcast is going to be about the finances of owning a dog. And so, yeah, we'll get into that next. So tune in next time. And actually, what do people do if they have questions for us that they'd like us to answer on the podcast? Yes. Uh, God, it's been a while since we've done a podcast. <laughs> you guys can send any questions you have to podcast at mybalto.com. Uh, again, we're happy to answer any questions that you do have. And we'll hopefully make a podcast about it if it's a large enough topic. Yeah. And if not, we'll just maybe do one where we just answer a whole bunch of questions. So mm -hmm. don't be shy. Bring us your questions. Thank you so much for listening. We just could talk all night about all these yes. things. <laughs> but um, yep, next one we'll be talking about the finances of veterinary medicine in general, because we think mm -hmm. it's really, really important and something that has kind of brought us together anyway to uh, doing my Balto. So we're going to get into that in a minute. Sounds great. See you guys soon. All right. See you guys there. <laughs>